to Let's Talk Spoop. I'm your host, John, and today we're going to be talking about, as you can see up here because I didn't move my mouse, Virus 32 uh, uh, on Shudder. Um, Jeremiah, uh, my co-host in uh, Welcome to the Asylum and sometimes other videos, uh, recommended this movie to me. Um, he seemed to really enjoy it. He wanted me to watch it. Uh, what he didn't uh, tell me was that this movie was in Spanish. So I was not uh, expecting to be watching a movie, another foreign film, uh, for Let's Talk Spoop. But, who not, you know, whatever. Uh, it's good to, you know, open my horizons when it comes to foreign horror. Um, because I used to not watch foreign horror at all because of subtitles. I don't like subtitles. But, um, yeah. So, as per normal... On Let's Talk Spoop, uh, we break things down into six separate categories. Those six separate categories are uh, story, acting, music, atmosphere, look, and finally, creep. Um, so, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Virus 32. So, um, story. So, this movie uh, takes place in, I think think it's either uruguay or maybe argentina a a south american country um where they speak spanish uh and it kind of it opens up with an old lady who has like a little bird and she goes to check on her bird and she's like oh it needs food and she wanders off and then when she comes back the bird's not in the cage and she's like oh what happened and she goes over to her what i assume is her husband he's got the bird in his hand and he's just crushed it um so that's that's how we start um, the camera then pans out of the, uh, apartment that they're in and like through, uh, the street and then up and we get introduced to our main character, um, Iris, uh, who is a security guard at a club, which looks like it's like a gym club sort of thing. Um, we find out that Iris is a bad parent. Uh, she's supposed to be watching her daughter, and she forgot she was supposed to be watching her daughter, so she took an extra shift at work, and uh, so she takes her daughter to work. Um, so then they leave her apartment, and the camera pans out, and it pans through the city, and you're seeing the city kind of slowly devolve into chaos, um, which is pretty cool, a uh, really good visual. Uh, and then we get to them going into the club, and uh them, them starting their day or starting the job she kind of introduces her daughter to the club and shows her around a little bit and they talk a little bit and she has to go check in so she leaves her daughter in a gymnasium spot uh, and she's like hey just hang out here play with the balls and stuff um i'll be back i just have to go do my rounds essentially um and then as she's doing her rounds we see somebody climb up a wall and through a window into the building uh, and then a lot of this movie is essentially about um her being separated from her daughter trying to find her daughter while also trying to evade what is kind of but not entirely rage zombies which are my least favorite form of zombie um the rage zombies so they're not they don't appear to be undead um they definitely are killable um they don't appear to be undead, but they have, like, the zombie characteristics of, like, well, not even really zombie characteristics. I don't, oh, yeah, well, they're cannibals, so they eat people, um, but they don't appear to be undead, and they um, have, like, a, I guess a timer. They're, like, the way it appears is they're driven toward aggression, so they have to do something aggressive. And Iris, from watching the um, the security cameras uh, in the club, figures out that there is a 32 second um, shutdown, I guess, where they do something aggressive, violent, and then for 32 seconds they turn off and they just kind of go like, and then 32 seconds later they start back up. Um, essentially so as i said she got separated from her uh hi ponko i'm cat sitting a uh, little ponko here um she gets separated from her daughter and while she's trying to find her daughter 
Um, her daughter, she fought, sees on the security camera that her daughter kind of gets abducted but doesn't see who or how. Um, and she runs into this guy in the club named Luis who was in an ambulance with his wife uh, on the way to the hospital when this kind of outbreak started. And Ruiz kind of explains that there's an easy way to tell um, if somebody is infected, and that's that their hands will have these marks on them that look kind of like a red rash. Um, and so he shows her his hands, like, I'm good. And she's like, okay, cool. Find out the zombies can't swim, which is actually good. Um, so they come up with a plan, and uh, there's kind of this, like, lack of trust uh, between Iris and Luis because Luis is essentially forcing Iris to help him make his wife give birth but his wife's infected um, so that was a really cool twist uh, on kind of the, the story I got very strong train to Busan vibes from this movie um, so I gave it a three out of five for story um, not terribly original, but it did, they did do enough things to give it a little bit of a twist to make it more original than your average rage zombie movie. Um, acting. Good. Um, it's in Spanish, uh, but despite it being in Spanish, uh, despite the language barrier between me and the movie itself, I was very much engrossed in the film. Um, uh, so, and that was definitely due to Iris's acting because it mostly follows her almost entirely. Um, so four out of five for acting music. There's nothing to talk about with music. So 2.5, uh, out of five for music atmosphere. Um, it is good. Like I said, I was very, very engaged. Um, at the end I was cheering for characters that I wanted to make it. Uh, I wanted certain characters to have bad things happen to them. Uh, I was very involved. So for atmosphere, I gave it a fl flat 5 out of 5. It was fantastic atmosphere. Um, look, zombies are kind of meh with blood effects. And really, that's about it. But the shooting, the, the way that they shot this movie was really good. Um, like I said, they did like these pans of a city that were like amazing to give you like a feel for it. Um, the angles that they shot from, it was just really, really good. Um, so that into the look gives you a three out of five for look. Uh, and then finally creep. This movie's not creepy. Um, first of all, I don't find zombies to be creepy. I know that my sister does. I might send her this video, um, after it gets posted just because she can't even stand the word zombie because it upsets her. And I like to just say it just to mess with her a lot. So my sister might find this movie creepy. I personally don't find zombies creepy. They have never scared me. Um, and then, like I said earlier, rage zombies are even less. Like, I guess, like, the idea of them running at you is scary. But because I don't like rage zombies just on principle, um, rage zombies, meh. Other than that, there's no real jumps. There's no real, um, like, pop up at you moments anything like that this is not a creepy movie um so i gave it unfortunately a one out of five for creep so when we uh tally up those scores divide by six hopefully i did my math right uh we get approximately a three out of five skulls for virus 32 uh on shutter and again in spanish <laughs>